Hi everybody, it's me, Arden Lee. If you've been watching any of my Twin Flame videos, which I've put out um, over the course of about the last maybe year and a half, so when I started speaking about it publicly, I'm sure you must wonder <laughs> what I must be thinking about the new Netflix documentary, Escaping Twin Flames. Oh boy, and yeah, um, I have uh, I have quite a bit to say about that. So, um, if you have not seen this documentary, boy, if you are in for an unhinged ride, it is certainly worth a watch. Um, it is a, about an organization called Twin Flames Universe, led by a twin flame, and I do put that in big old air quotes, a uh, couple, Jeff and Shalea, who, Shalea, Shalea, yeah, Shalea, who um, run this, you know, sort of pyramid, multi-level coaching business, and I use the word business in air quotes too, to apparently teach people how to meet, attract, and pair with their twin flame and come into harmonious union. And, um, oh, yeah. I'll tell you what my first impression was, was as soon as I saw the trailer, as soon as I saw that there had been um, something even coming out about uh, this topic, I was immediately like, oh God, um, this is terrible, this is horrible, because now the greater collective is going to assume that this horrible distortion is like the be all and end all of the twin flame paradigm, right? That, that everyone is teaching it in this horrific, abusive, exploitative fashion, and therefore the entire twin flame paradigm must be illegitimate. And, um, and I have seen some of that somewhere when people are talking about the documentary, especially people who are not um, really in the spiritual community who I know from other circles of my life who maybe have just sort of heard of it and uh, and are basically like, oh God, yeah, that whole twin flame thing is a bunch of nonsense anyway. And not just the twin flames universe organization, but the entire concept of twin flames, which, you know, is frustrating to me. And also I get it though, because uh, there is so much distortion and misinformation about twin flames out there in the field, because like many spiritual paradigms, it is a paradox and it is one of those things that looks incredibly simplistic and then turns out to be far more complex and then also turns out to be more simplistic. Like many spiritual truths in my experience. And it is, uh, I try not to take it personally, <laughs> you know, because, um, but man, it's, it's just, it's, it's hard um, because then I'm going to come on here and I'm going to make a video, videos about twin flames trying to teach what I know, what I've uh, come to understand through the path that I have gone through. And my fear is that people are going to look at me and think that I'm trying to do something like Jeff and Julia, and I'm definitely not, right? I mean, I think you get a few like sentences into any of my videos and hopefully, hopefully you would pick up on that. But um. But yeah, it, uh, I definitely have uh, wounding in my past around being misunderstood and my safety relying on my being understood. And so being now an adult and my dharma is so very clearly about engaging in understanding and ultimately transmuting the distortion around this highly misunderstood, highly maligned paradigm um, yeah, I guess it's a good thing I repatterned, <laughs> right? Um, so what I want to do in this video is, um, I want to go over all of the things that Twin Flames universe gets wrong about Twin Flames. And there's also a really great video out there by a former teacher of mine named Catherine Bird, that's Catherine with a K and Bird like Bird. 
Um, and if you just Google or not Google, but search in YouTube, Catherine Bird, Twin Flames Doc, uh, you will find her videos. And she does a really good job of unpacking all of the red flags around the cult tactics and spiritual abuse that happens in, in Twin Flames universe in the documentary. Basically, she says, you know, if you see these things, run the other direction. And she did a really great job of that. So I'm going to, um, just for the sake of, of brevity and a conciseness in the message of this video, and because this is kind of my lane, <laughs> I want to talk pretty much just about what they get wrong, what Twin Flames universe gets wrong about teaching the concept of Twin Flames and what they prescribe in their coaching for better or for worse, which is usually usually worse um, as, as I've seen in, uh, in the documentary itself. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna focus on, I think it's, it's partly because of my autism that even though, yes, obviously the spiritual abuse tactics they use are horrible and I hope that uh, more and more people find themselves resourced against uh, uh, falling for those. Uh, I don't want to say falling for that seems kind of victim blamey, but um, hopefully people will become more familiar with uh, the, the flavor of exploitation that is out there in many spiritual communities that are not um, focused on truth and development, that are focused on their own self-aggrandizement, their own um, money making. And uh, uh, yeah, those are available, but for me, my, my, my autistic proclivities render me most offended at the bad mathematics. <laughs> um, that they are, they are not only exploiting and grifting, but they are teaching the path wrong. They are teaching it backwards, right? So I want to go over, this video is just going to be about what Twin Flames universe gets wrong about Twin Flames. And um, yeah. I appreciate those who have been able to call out the harm in Twin Flames universe and yet remain open enough and nuanced enough in the conversation to understand that this does not apply to um, not all Twin Flames, right? Um, yeah, um, yeah, that there can be the to not throw the baby out with the bathwater, that many spiritual truths are exploited for abusive purposes in many spiritual communities. And that does not mean that the truth itself is not true. Um, twin flames, the idea of twin flames is something that goes back quite literally to the beginning of time. And the path will take you back to the beginning of the time, <laughs> beginning of time and to the beginning of your own history and will have you repattern everything along your timeline um, and uh, distortions that have come out, especially that are so redundant of 20th and 21st century patriarchy, have nothing to do with the truth of this twin flame paradigm. Um, yeah. Though all things foul would wear the brow of grace, yet grace must still look so says William Shakespeare in the play whose name we won't mention because um, <laughs> it's Scottish. Uh, all right, so <laughs> what does Twin Flames universe get wrong about Twin Flames? Um, first off, off the bat, they are not teaching non-attachment. They are teaching attachment and they are teaching attachment really hardcore. You will notice that they often say to the folks that they're coaching, um, you have to fight for your twin. You only get one, and some of you have heard my thoughts on whether you only have one twin flame or not, and I will revisit that concept toward the later part of the video because that is something that is a little, um, I wanna expand upon it in a little bit of a more complex way than I've done before. But for now, let's talk about that idea of attachment, that idea that you only have one twin flame, and therefore, since you only have one, you must fight, you must cling, you must make it work. This is 100% the opposite <laughs> of what the twin flame path actually teaches, which is non-attachment, which is unconditional love, which is love without attachment, because it is only when you are resting in a space of mutual unconditional love, meaning mutual non-attachment, that 
you can be in harmonious union because if you are attached, then your codependent patterning is likely to come up, right? Um, things like clinging and grasping, which do not jive in a relationship because a relationship of unconditional love has to be extraordinarily supportive of each partner's free will. Because without allowance for free will, we can have no true honesty between partners. If there is a way that someone must behave or act or show up for us, and that doesn't mean we don't get to have boundaries, right? We absolutely do. And we get to communicate our boundaries and our feelings as well. And we get to set those. Um, but there is no relationship based in unconditional love that is coming from a place of attachment, that it must be you, it must be in this way and in this time. And because how can you love someone if you're saying only my ideas about this relationship matter and yours don't? If someone is in resistance to you, no matter what um, trauma or, um, you know, even if you are meant for each other, let's say that's a thing and maybe it is, right? If, if even if that were true, if that person is in resistance or whatever is coming up that they don't want to do the thing that you want them to do or show up for you in the way that you want them to show up for you, um, bulldozing over that is not going to change that, right? There is only a, that is the only way you can really truly love someone is by unconditionally accepting them. And that does not mean, you know, that you have no boundaries. It does not mean that you allow someone to walk all over you. I, I very, very strongly believe if you, if you watch the, I think one of the last videos I made, um, called, uh, uh, the pillars of inner union, I talked about how healthy boundaries and unconditional love are those two pillars, right? I love you no matter what. And these are my boundaries. And if you want to be in my life, then these things have to, you know, if you're not going to do those, no problem, but then it's not, it's a no for me then, you know, um, yeah, unconditional love and healthy boundaries. So this idea of attachment, you just can't have unconditional love that is coming from a place that is so attached to a vision that another person does not share with you for whatever reason that you feel like you need to strong arm them, them into this thing. And it was just so cringy watching these coaches tell these poor women for the most part to, to go so far that literally there was one woman who landed in jail for, I think four months, she said, for stalking, for violating a restraining order. My God, right? Or there's the other woman who's like, they're showing her texting and, and the dude is writing back like, I'm not your twin flame, this is crazy. This is, this is you guys, like this is the reason why I even, you know, took so long to even start speaking about this path publicly because I never wanted to look like that. I never ever in my, in, in all the time that, that, that this information was presented to me, wanted to in any way project a narrative onto a person who is like, you're insane, <laughs> right? I just, I just, that's, that's just God. I would, I would never want to do that to a person. I would never want to look like that myself. It was, it's just, wow. It's, um, it's really cringy. So, but I kept getting all these signs. And so I kind of did it um, mostly in quiet. I kind of did the path and I told, you know, my, maybe my teachers or my spiritual guides or my close friends about it. And then it wasn't until 2022 where I was like, okay, I think I can present this in a way that it actually makes sense. Right. And the only time I did that when I was, it was when I was like, you know, your twin flame is the mathematical equivalent of whoever is equidistant from the zero point to you. They are, they embody those oppositional polarities. And so if you get yourself closer to the zero point, then the person who is your twin would be your mathematical equal. If that other person that you thought it was or that you had an attachment to, if they don't do that growth with you, um, then they're not your twin. I'm gonna get to my 2023 feelings on on that in, in by the end of this video. Um, but suffice it to say, that is the only way that the math checks out, right? That is the only way that you can unconditionally love someone. And, and because if you think that they're the only one for you, then you're very attached to them, obviously. You know, how, if there's only one person for you that, you, that can be your true, true love, your twin flame, then how on earth are you supposed to love them unconditionally? Because you're basically saying, I need you to show up in this union for me or else, you know, <laughs> or, or else, 
I'm missing out on the love of my life, right? No one wants that kind of responsibility on them. And to say that to someone is, even if you're not saying it, even if you're just implying it, like that's like, imagine hearing that, right? I need you, like imagine hearing that from someone uh, that, that either you don't have the same feelings for, or you're not ready for, or whatever, whatever the case may be, right? Imagine hearing someone say to you, you're my twin flame and therefore I need to be with you. You need to be with me or else I can't experience true love in this lifetime. That is not non-attachment. That is really super conditional. Um, so this idea that you have to fight for your twin. If you're going to fight for anything, fight for your own inner union and see who shows up. Just, just do work on, because mathematically, if there is a person who is destined for you, if, if, big if, then according to the rules of the twin flame path, when you get yourself to that zero point, they will show up. So if you really are attached to your twin, the best thing you can do actually is detach and work on yourself and work on your own spiritual development and whatever that looks like for you and just get your life to the place where you are the happiest. Um, so that's one. <laughs> We're already 16 minutes in the video. I, we might be here a while. I'll try and breeze through the rest of these a little faster. Um, the idea that you need to stay in a toxic relationship for your twin flame, right? Um, there's a lot of relationships that happen in the documentary. Um, I'm particularly thinking of Marley and Kaylee, I think were their names. Um, the young women who, I'm not one girl, oh God, she was like 19, my God. And they're trying to pair her up with a guy she hardly knows who's 11 years older than her with a criminal record. And, and you know, and, and I mean, I hate the DSM as much as the next spiritual person I know, but, um, but uh, you know, but diagnoses of, um, uh, bipolar and, and schizophrenia, like that person, and then just be like, oh, shove them together. Okay. You're in harmonious union. Right. Um, and I'm not knocking mental illness because I've certainly have uh, mental illness in my past and I love many people with mental illness, but like the point of the twin flame path and the repatterning is to actually come to a place of peace. Right. Um, that doesn't mean that, that, uh, uh, like I'm not, I'm not saying that we all have to, to be perfect. Right. But if we look at most, most mental illness that is not like a, a brain disorder, most of it, most mental illness is traumagenic. And that is the point of the twin flame path is for us to repattern from our trauma imprints and come back to our center and find that peace, right? So for them to shove the two, this poor girl, you know, with, with this guy who is definitely not ready for a healthy relationship and just be like, you're twin flames because we said so. And boom, there, now you were in harmonious union. We must stick together. And the idea that you stay in a toxic relationship, um, <laughs> uh, that is, that is, you're not going to be able to reach your inner union if you are agreeing to stay in toxicity. Inner union is also about coming into your own peace and your own sovereignty and having that place of, again, uncondition unconditional love and healthy boundaries. Unconditional love that says, I love you so much, but actually I love you so much that I refuse to be in an unhealthy relationship with you. So I'm gonna be over here working on myself. I love you, I support you, but these are my boundaries. And if I don't set these boundaries, then we're both gonna be in a toxic spiral and that's not gonna be good for you either. So yeah, if your relationship at any point turns toxic, no matter whether that person is your twin flame or not, it's best to take space and work your shit out, right? Or you can, you, sometimes you can work it out together if that, if that works, right? But you don't accept toxicity and say, well, I have to make it work with this person. They're my twin flame. And speaking of Speaking of that, um, Jeff also tells um, that one other young woman, I think Kaylee was her name, um, that she has to give her divine masculine sex every day. Um, I find that like hot as a fantasy, <laughs> right? But that's totally different. That's again saying you don't get to have boundaries. Um, like I'd love to be in a wonderful, happy inner union place where I do get to have sex every day. And so I'm not like, I'm not saying like conversely, I think if I were in a relationship where there, there were, there was like a discrepancy between 
two people's sexualities, then they might want to also like work on that too, right? But this idea that you don't, you don't get to have a say in your body. You don't get to be sovereign over your body and that you're going to ignore whatever other issues may be present in the relationship or for the sake of sex or believe that sex is going to solve those issues. That is definitely, that is, that is, that is not healthy. That is just, that is plain old, not healthy. I like to think that when twin flames are are in inner union. Well, I guess it depends on the people and how much they, you know, personally want to have sex. Maybe you have two like demisexual or asexual twin flames and they're happy together because, you know, if you are twin flames, you are probably going to have a balance, right? But like for me, I, I do have a dopamine deficiency and I'm, you know, um, I tend to word, I don't tend to word promiscuity because I'm very picky, but I tend to word um, hypersexuality. And I'd love to have a relationship where like it's healthy and wonderful and we're having sex all the time. That would be great. Um, but I am not ever going to pretend that problems in my relationship don't exist in, and, and, or pretend that I can solve those with sex or pretend that when those problems come up, if I'm feeling unsafe, I'm not going to be able to feel turned on. I have noticed for myself that, um, that I tend to, I tend to be hypersexual in relationship, um, unless there is a problem in the relationship. If there is a problem in the relationship, then I can't you know, then it's like, no, we have to address this first. If you just want to, then I don't feel seen and heard. Um, so yeah, so that's, <laughs> there's, there's another one, um, that, that, that twin flame uses, when twin flames universe definitely gets wrong uh, about having a twin flame relationship. Um, here's another one that anyone can tell you who your twin flame is. Now in the documentary, as you watch Jeff and Shalia, um, um, first they go from, well, who do you think your twin flame is? You know, and most people who seek them out sort of have maybe an idea of who it might be, or they kind of contrive someone and they, they're like, oh, that dude, like they, they, like they do the, to Marley, then the, the 19 year old, they're like, they're like, you know, oh, that guy who messaged you on Facebook, that's your twin flame. There you go. You know, and in front of everyone. And she's like, oh, great. You know, like she doesn't, she doesn't want to speak up and like say, that she feels uncomfortable or whatever, or maybe she even feels happy, like, oh good, I'm special, I have a twin flame, I get to make this work or whatever. And then they're like, oh, he can't travel here because he's he's gotta be on probation. Oh, look at you going through a separation phase. How cute, oh God, you guys, this is terrible. Um, and then toward the end of the documentary, Jeff and Shalia start saying, all right, we have channeled pairs of twin flames, by which they literally mean here are the peep, the names of the people in this group. And we have paired up random names together and they're your twin flame. Go meet them. And there are people in the documentary who literally fly out and meet this stranger. And they're like, uh, I don't know, man. They felt like a stranger. It was a little awkward. I guess we'll work on our relationship and we'll get to harmonious union. And it's like, oh my God, you're the life decisions, decisions you're making based on these, these, these people who are, who are exploiting you is just, it's just, it's really sad. Um, poof. So if anyone tries to say that they can tell you who your twin flame is, they are probably bullshitting you and they are probably exploiting the fact that you have a strong need to know. The truth is, Nobody can really tell you who your twin is until you get to the zero point and you see who shows up for you. That is the only way you can know for sure. Even if there was someone who could tell you who your twin flame was, how do you know that you can tell that that person is the person who can tell you, right? It all comes back to that self-trust. There are readers and psychics who can discern, and I know because I have had this happen with me, um, who can discern a really strong soul bond between two people. Um, and the way that this happened was someone who um, is a very advanced psychic and magician friend of mine uh, was like, is your twin, in, is, is he in this cur city currently or, or whatever? And I was like, uh, yeah, actually just this weekend. Yeah, how'd you know? And, he, and my friend was like, oh, cause I saw you know, and he had like, he would have had no idea that my twin happened to be like, you know, traveling to this, you know, to another, another city or whatever. And to be able to call that, like, there's no way he would have been able to, to see that or whatever otherwise. So it's not that 
it's not that there are not psychics who exist who can perceive soul bonds, but first of all, um, you can have a soul bond with a lot of different people and it doesn't necessarily mean that you're they're your twin flame. You can have cords with people and they might not actually, it might not be a twin flame bond. Is there someone who can discern those? Maybe. I also remember when I went to my very first, when I, when I finally, you know, accepted that the twin flame path was real, there was a reader who was like, oh, this person is a twin flame, but I didn't bring this up and say who was my twin flame. I actually just said, you know, I just want to know about my love life. Like, you know, when is, when is my relationship going to come together? That's literally all I said. And the reader was like, oh, this is a twin flame situation. Oh shit. And that was the, at that point she was the third person who had told me and I was like, oh geez, I guess I better start listening. Um, even then though, I would not have, I would, I, I, it was just for me, it was just that there were too many signs and everything was way too weird and my whole spiritual world was exploding and there were signs and synchronicities and people just speaking to me in ways that I had never experienced before and I couldn't ignore all that. And I got the message very strongly that if I ignored all that, I would miss out on an opportunity for spiritual development and magic development and my understanding magic and practicing magic and being initiated into magic and I would just be, you know, I would miss that opportunity. I mean, you never miss, miss, right? But like. If I chose not to believe in that, um, then I'd just stay where I was and just keep repeating the same patterns and everything that that was. So that's why I did it because at the time I was just like, this, this sounds nuts. I don't wanna, I, I don't wanna sound like those overly attached people, right? Uh, oh my God, you're my twin flame. That's why I never, you know, that's why I didn't say anything about it because if it's real, I don't have to. And if it's not real, well then I would have been dumb bringing it up, right? So. Um, so be really wary. I'm not saying that there are not psychics out there who can discern, um, soul bonds, who can see them psychically. There are. But if someone says, I'm the only one who can tell you who your twin flame is, or I can tell you definitively who your twin flame is, or just, just watch out for that. That's, that's not a great sign. <laughs> um, Gender polarity, oh my goodness. The transphobia in the Twin Flame, Twin Flames universe, yes, the organization, but honestly, like in the whole Twin Flame culture, and you guys, like miniature pity party for 2016 Arden, who was having this awakening happen to her and having, and, and seeing all of this Twin Flame stuff come in and getting all of these really strong messages about it. And like then going to Facebook and looking and being like, what's a Twin Flame? And maybe I should join some support groups, right? And all of this, awful, awful distortion um, being out there. All of this, you know, running in, I got booted out of so many Twin Flame Facebook groups, you guys, just because the, the transphobia was so rampant. Um, again, their, their spiritual truths, if they can be distorted to support a current paradigm, such as uh, patriarchy and polarized gender, as we understand it in the world that we're living in today, um, people will see the things that they want to see and they will see their conditioning in the spiritual truth because their conditioning is more familiar to them. And then rather than breaking that down and actually understanding the spiritual paradox for what it is, um, they'll just be like, oh, it's the thing that I already know. There it is. Like, I got this one, <laughs> right? Um, that obviously happens a lot with a lot of different spiritual teachings and, um, and gender and the divine masculine, divine feminine, which is again, one of those phrases that, that. I feel like I can't even use it anymore because people think that I'm talking about the way that it's normally expressed, um, <laughs> the way that it's normally used um, in, in much conversation today. And so this idea of um, feminine and masculine gets warped to, to be the math mathematical opposite of what it's kind of supposed to be in my experience, which is that people are teaching these really polarized gender roles and basically saying, if your relationship is not working out, it's probably because you are not polarized enough. You are not being feminine enough. He is not being masculine enough. If you are too at the center, you are amorphous and you are, you know, you're just, there's no charge. There's no polarity, right? Well, um, if you're a twin flame, first of all, in my experience, you don't really have to worry about whether you're attracted to the person or not. It's pretty, it's pretty magnetic. You don't have to worry about that part of polarity. 
what you do need to do is you need to come into your own balance, your own inner balance and your own inner masculine and inner feminine and have these things in balance because that is why 1111 is the twin flame number, right? 11 is the first number that is both two numbers, one and one, and one number, 11 at the same time. So 1111 is a relationship between two people who are each balanced within themselves, right? And I am non-binary, um, although I skew femme. Um, and I made a, a bigger video about this that you can look up called Pride in the Twin Flame Path about how I reconcile my non-binary non gender with being a twin flame. And basically the gist of what I say in the video is um, if we are opposite polarities of our twin, then all gender spectrum expressions can exist in twin flame pairings because all it means is that your twin is equidistant from you to the zero point. So I am um, I am a non-binary femme. Um, I also, I will accept the term woman, right? Like, it's, it's fine, right? I just don't feel particularly attached. Like if I had been born a man, I don't think I would have dysphoria. I would just still, you know, um, wear makeup and be in a band. <laughs> like, you know, I, I would be, I would be, I'd be all the, the things that I am in, in male form and that would be okay. So I feel like I am not a, an extreme polarized feminine. I am a, a, a feminine who is more like, more masculine, um, you know, more comfortable with my own masculinity and whatever. And I tend to be attracted to men who are men, you know, or or maybe, you know, non-binary masculine folks um, who are also a bit feminine, who are closer to that zero point. They mirror me, they mirror my expression. So by the time episode three comes around and Jeff and Shilia are like pairing up people in their group, which by the way, like the twin flame paradigm does not care about what Facebook group you're in. When they start being like, your twin must be in this Facebook group, they either have to join it or they're already in the group. Like that's, oh my God, can you can just, just, I understand that like when you're in a cult, it's like the frog in the pot of boiling water, right? But if you step and just, just step back and think about that for a minute, like the twin flame path does not care which Facebook group you joined. And so for someone to be like, your, your twin has to be in this Facebook group, like what a 3D wave trying to contain a 5D thing. It's just, uh, it blows my mind. Um, so they start pairing these twins together, but what they notice is that they have a lot more women than men and they start telling some of the women in the group, and this is just really horrible. And it's, it's really, you know, um, an attack on trans people as well, because it, it, even if they don't intend it that way, and I'm not saying that they didn't, but even if they didn't, um, you know, the idea that all gender transitions are based in um, abuse or in confusion and not knowing who you are, someone else telling you who you are, who, you, who you're supposed to be, um, that hurts trans people because trans people have to fight hard enough as it is to get gender affirming care. So, um, so there's that. And um, this idea that they're gonna say you're actually a masculine and you have to change your name and pronouns so that you can go be polarized now with your feminine. It's just, oh boy, I have never seen, a, like, I have never seen more more gender confusion than in Jeff and Shilia. That's just, that's just, wow. That's, oof, yeah. Um, so you can be, a, if, if, if you are a twin flame or if you are looking to call in a person who mirrors your polarities, you can do that from anywhere on the gender spectrum. What will differentiate a twin is they will, they will be about equidistant from you. They will be your mirror image because that is what the twin flame paradigm is about. It's about polarity because when we observe the other person, we can literally calculate where we are and then we have self-knowledge. Yay, right? And that is the point of the path is through loving someone else, you come to know yourself better. And then you can work on yourself through your love for that person and everything, Jesus. I mean, even like even today, I'm still learning new things about myself that I would not have learned um, were it not for observing my twin. And uh, <laughs> even even this many years in, um, whew, it's been a wild, wild ride. Um, but self-discovery is, is exciting. <laughs> um, exciting and, and wild and very strange at this point. Um, <laughs> to still be discovering new things. Uh, uh, so yeah, um, 
it's that it's that it is polarity but it's not you must be polarized it's wherever you are authentically your twin is going to mirror that um, you can have great relationships with folks who are anywhere on the gender spectrum. Probably not a twin flame because the characteristic that sets a twin flame relationship apart is that equidistance and polarity. Um, but that doesn't mean it's any better or worse. It's just, it's its own, it's its own thing, right? Um, and then finally, I promised I was going to talk about whether you only have one twin flame. Jeff and Shalia are like, you only have one twin flame and therefore you must fight for them, right? Y'all, y'all saw me um, come on here and really talk very vehemently about how we cannot only have one, or we must believe that we have more. That our we must believe that our twin flame is not a specific person. That it is only the person who is mathematically equidistant from the zero point. To us right um to the zero point from us and um that is the only belief that allows for non-attachment that allows for non for for unconditional love that is still very true because that is the only way that you can reach the zero point and that is the only belief that in its application helps you to resolve the paradox of how can you practice non-attachment if you believe that you have one soulmate and the answer to that is no, that you, you get yourself to the zero point by getting there um, and possibly having multiple twins along the way who mirror you at different stages so you can track your growth. That way, if you're out here and someone is being super avoidant, super runnery, <laughs> right? Um, and you're feeling like you're really chasery and you hate that, right? <laughs> As we all do, then you can use your agency to move yourself closer to secure attachment and a person will show up um, from this place and mirror you and um and you will keep traveling along the spectrum like that until you reach the zero point of inner union without um without allowance for that you would um you would get stuck, you would not progress. You would say, this is my twin and I have to keep chasing them. And that actually polarizes you further. So when I say the math is backwards that they're teaching, <laughs> that's what I mean. The circumstances and experiences that I've had in the last couple of years have changed my beliefs on my, my stance about whether this is categorically true. I now believe that there is more of a possibility that there actually is one person who really is our destined twin flame. But the only way that I was able to get there was by believing that there wasn't. And here's the thing. If there is no one out there who can really tell you who your twin flame is, and even you don't really know who your twin flame is until you get to the zero point, because attachment and the feelings that come with codependence will sometimes masquerade themselves. Like you will wrap your own feelings up in the biggest words you have for it. And you will mistake your attachment for being a twin flame soul bond. And I've seen it happen to many people. And I'm sorry because nobody likes to hear like, no, that's not actually your twin flame. You're just having real super strong codependent feelings about a person and you want them to be that. And that sucks to hear. And I get it. But the only way that you're ever going to know for sure anyway, if you're right about that, is if you get to the zero point and see who shows up. So I go from saying, I used to say you can't, you know, your twin flame is, is just who is your mathematical opposite and there is nothing that's predestined. And what I say about this now is that we cannot know what is predestined from our human standpoint. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't. Maybe we can get clues about that. Maybe there is someone who can tell us if we have a strong soul bond with a person, but there is no way that we can know for sure. And if it is predestined, if this is a thing, then you better just get yourself to the zero point and do your own inner work because that's how you do it. You're not going to get there by being an attachment and then see what happens from there. And if it doesn't, 
then maybe that person really was not your twin flame. But guess what? Then you're at the zero point and you're in your own balance and you don't want someone who doesn't want you. So it's worth doing the work either way. <laughs> but yeah, um, even if whether we do, whether we don't just have one twin flame, believing that we don't is the thing that's going to actually allow us to practice the non-attachment and get there. And I will say that the relationships that happen along the way, the universe will send you people who mirror your polarities and show you in the places where you need growth. And in, in my case, you know, you know, will will trickster you <laughs> into giving you all the twin flame signs and synchronicities that you need to believe that so that you can practice the necessary non-attachment. And then you just do the path. You do the path as you're supposed to do it, which is again, working on yourself, getting to a place of inner balance within yourself and where you really truly feel complete and know that you can manifest and create the kind of relationship that you want from, from wherever, from, from wherever you are, which means you're not dependent on one other person and you can actually love them right where they're at and unconditionally accept them and, um, and, and practice that, that, allowance and acceptance that is really that allowance of free will and acceptance of a person right where they're at that really is key to unconditional love so um yeah so anyway that's my thought on escaping twin flames and um i just hope i just i just hope that um i just hope that that i am able to like when i think about the idea of correcting everyone wrong on the internet about twin flames. I just see like a giant infinite ocean in front of me and it feels <laughs> like such a gargantuan task from where I sit currently. But, um, but I hope going forward that I will be able to, uh, to teach the path in a way that is healthy and sustainable and that is supportive of people who do have this very real experience of awakening that comes with all of these external signs and synchronicities and that that does facilitate the spiritual growth that actually can happen in a person. And I hope that I can help make that more possible for people to access without all of the shame and stigma that comes around the idea of twin flames from people like the folks running Twin Flames Universe. So. Please, please see and hold this intention for me. Please see, please, please see me um, fixing all of the distortion. That is the thing that I am gonna pray for. Um, that I'm going to try to live by example in my own life. So with that said, good luck to you if you're on the path and uh, I'll see you in the next video.